Hey, um, I wanted to bring, uh, this is kind of well overdue because I've had the truck back for about a week and a half, two weeks almost, but uh, what happened? You know, why was it gone for a month? What was the service? Um, what was the final bill? And uh, so all of that is gonna be coming up in this video. How's it going everybody? I'm Emeka, this is Driven Hard, and if you are brand new to the channel, nice to meet you here. Leave me a comment, let me know what automobile you are driving hard. This is my 2019 Range Rover Sport, and yes, it gets driven hard on hand, more importantly, off-road. Um, I just got back from the dealership and I wanted to break down exactly why it took a month, almost a month, and what was the final bill? Oh my God, I was not expecting that. But um, so yeah, let's kind of dive into it and, and talk about exactly what happened. All right, so if you know, you know, I drive this thing everywhere I can. I push it to the limits. I do exactly what it was intended for. It's not a mall crawler, it's an off-roader. And uh, it just looks great everywhere. And uh, so basically what I did is I went out with a buddy who has a uh, uh, new Wrangler JL, uh, unlimited, four inch left on it, you know, 38s, I believe. And, uh, you know, and so I wanted to go out and see, hey, you know, how could I keep up with him? And uh, I kept up with him pretty damn well. Uh, you know what, in fact, let me roll a couple clips right now. I had a lot of fun with that. Um, there was one instant though, one instant, I pushed this baby a little too hard and uh, you know, it cost me the starter. And believe it or not, this is the fourth starter I've replaced on this. And uh, we're gonna talk about reliability in a second because it's actually not a reliable uh, reliability part per se, it's just pushing the limits. So let's talk about, um, well, what happened essentially. Um, actually, you know, before we get into that, let me talk about the other things that uh, they had to fix. So they did fix uh, a linkage, I believe it's called a linkage arm. Uh, yeah, so fitted the, found passenger side drop link has excessive play. So I'm not really a mechanic, I'm not a technical guy. So, but it's something to do with the linkage arm. And yeah, so it got worn out. And so they replaced that. They did the bushings a, a long time ago, but last August, I believe. Um, but yeah, so they replaced the linkage arm because when I was going over uneven surfaces, I could feel like there was something a little loose up there. So they just replaced that under warranty. No issue for me. But the big thing was the starter because um, I don't think anything else. Oh, they replaced something was uh, causing a rattle in the door and they replaced that under warranty. That was good. And then I don't think there was anything else that they had to deal with. So what I did essentially is the max weighting depth for Range Rovers is 900 millimeters. I believe that's the highest of any stock vehicle right off the, you know, right off the showroom floor, pretty cool. Um, and one of the reasons is because they have the air intakes at the very top of the uh, engine. In fact, I'll try to show you those right now. And then the second thing um, that prevents the weighting depth th from going any higher than 900 millimeters is the electrical components, including, in this case, the starter motor. Now, the starter motor, after talking to people, they place it low enough to help reduce the amount of heat. And then also because it's, I believe it's connected to the flywheel to turn the engine or something, forgive me if I'm wrong on that terminology, um, but it, you know, it has to be at a certain point. And that point does affect the weighting depth because it can get wet, but it cannot really be submerged, I guess. And the first time I did this was when I did this video. Right, the infamous video. Um, and uh, the starter failed on me a few, about a month or two later. Um, and then, um, so I replaced, you know, that one got replaced, um, all good. They covered it. Um, and then and the one that they replaced it with actually started wearing down for some reason. But anyways, so they just replaced that right away before I had an issue with it. Then I had the one that I just had in here and uh, I went through um, this little, this little, this little uh, lake. <laughs> Okay. 
and uh, you know, it was all good. Uh, I was now, so the modes I was in, I was in the highest off-road setting you have that you can aim manually. And then when I got about three quarters of the way there, I believe it started to float. Cause it, like, you know that feeling when you're floating, hopefully you don't know it, but if you know it, you, you know it. And like, I felt that at the last little bit. Cause I was like, you know, I heard the engine rev up a little bit because there was no more, you know, the wheel started spinning cause I was off, off ground. And uh, it just kind of, you know, I felt like that sideways motion, right? Um, and then it said extended off-road height, uh, bumping up into extended off-road height. So it puts you up a little bit more. And then manually, when you stop, you can put your foot on the brake, stop, and uh, hold the suspension up for three seconds and it'll bump it up even higher. Um, so anyways, so that was the suspension setup. So there I was regular off-road and then coming back, I was in the super extended mode. Now coming back, I wish I, maybe I have some video of this. I'll try to clip it in if I, if I do. But uh, you know, I got like, um, what was the first warning? I think it was like um, a battery, batteries. I, I got some sort of battery warning. And I was like, at the time I was charging, I had all the charge plugs uh, filled up. So I was like, oh shit, you know, maybe that was it. Um, and then I had a suspension fault as well. And it's an offer to height not available. And so I only had regular suspension to get off the trail. That was all good, a couple scrapes, but nothing major. We got to the top of the trail, um, ate some snacks, powered it down for 10 minutes, locked it up. 10 minutes later, it was good to go. No more issues. A few weeks later, I started noticing the start, uh, the starting of the vehicle tended to be a little, like it just started sounding a little different. And immediately I was like, oh no, this sounds like it sounded like before. And so, you know, it sort of got me thinking, got me thinking. And then um, I was just driving one day and I came to stoplight, turn, uh, you know, stopped. I usually turn auto start stop on, but for whatever reason I didn't. And uh, it, it went on and then it just died. And I was like, oh man. And I knew instantly what happened because I still had all the lights and everything. So I knew it wasn't the battery. I knew right away it was the starter. So had it towed, brought it there. I was like, guys, just bypass everything, check the starter. Of course they had their procedures they had to go through and it ended up being the starter um and in fact I'll, I'll show a picture of the starter right now for you so what happened um basically the when you go over the 900 millimeters of waiting depth you know the starters are now starting to get submerged sediment gets in there and whatnot um so i ended up frying it they're like ah we replaced this for you once we're not going to do it again so that bill ended up coming to $1,855 for the starter, the labor on it, as well as something called the starter breather hose, Ho hose, starter breather hose. Where are you at? Um, that uh, I guess helps the starter breathe or something like that. Yeah. So anyways, so um, yeah, and that includes tax. It was $1,727 uh, for the... Uh, 680 for the starter. No, 68. Yeah. What's CL? I don't know what CL is. Starter motor is 969 Canadian. The breather tube is 77 Canadian. Oh, I guess maybe that's the labor 680. I have no idea. I don't know the breakdown. I just paid for it. But, uh, you know, that was the case. And the reason why it took so long is they had to order the parts from Toronto and uh, there's some delays in shipping. Plus, they were understaffed and, you know, they. For somebody forgot to order the freaking linkage. So they ordered that at a separate time and we had a long weekend and whatever. So that's why I had that Jaguar for so long. But, uh, you know, all in all, it's all good. Would I do it again? I'm going to avoid deep, deep water. Uh, I'll be honest. You know, wife was not happy. That's two grand. Unfortunately, the channel's not making enough yet to do $2,000 worth of damage on outings. Unfortunately, I would, I would more than more than love to so subscribe like comment share let's 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 blow this channel up so i can do more crazy things um what i am going to do though is there's a couple of shops third-party shops that specialize with uh land rover products so what i'm going to do is i'm going to see about getting the starter reinforced better um you know because some things come from the factory but like i want to see if i can get that sealed up 
better because that keeps that is the thing that keeps failing i i i know don't get water over the hood you don't want to you know you don't want to take water in or anything like that into the, the air intakes because then you're you're done but uh i'd like to see if i can get that sealed up a little bit better if you know of anything uh or if you're in the vancouver bc area and you know of a place that might be able to help me out hook me up please you know let me know here or instagram that'd be great but um yeah all in all that that's basically what happened you know, in terms of reliability, this was totally my fault. Oops. This was my fault once again. Um, you know, first time was my fault. Second time was my, or, you know, this time was my fault. The the part that started failing, it was weird. There was like a, there was a thunderstorm in Monterey. And so the roads really get flooded there. So I was just driving around with the road, splashing through puddles and, and stuff like that. But nothing like, I wasn't going deep in, in any deep water. It was just watering the roads. And that was when I started noticing that uh, it started sounding a little funny. So, you know, I, that definitely wasn't my fault. So it's, you know, and I was, I've spoken to a couple of tacks and they're like, sometimes part, you know, parts come in damaged, right? So, you know, it's just bad luck or whatever the case is. But um, yeah, you know, all in all, like, glad to have her back. Can't wait to go on more adventures. Uh, you know, hopefully the borders open up so I can hit up some of you down in, uh, you know, California and Arizona and, and uh, you know, the Moab area. I would love to go and uh, hit some trails with you guys, make some videos down there. But uh, doing what we can up here for right now, um, you know, I am in Vancouver, B.C. So if you ever want to go hit some trails, leave me a comment here. Reach out to me on Instagram or, uh, you know, email. You can do that as well. I'll, I'll, I'll put that in the pinned comments. You guys have all my info there. But uh life with the Range Rover. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. But absolutely no regrets. If you're thinking about grabbing one of these, grab it. You know, just just get it. Love it. You only live once, so you might as well enjoy it. But uh, yeah, so that was, the, that was the story, everybody. Sorry it took so long to get this video up, but uh, I appreciate all your, your support. We've surpassed 4 million views. Incredible. We're over 6,000 subscribers. Cannot wait to hit that first 10,000 subscriber mark and 100,000 subscriber mark. But we got some more great content. If you have video ideas or anything else you want to know about this thing, you let me know. Um, and more importantly, you let me know what you are driving hard. Till next time, everyone. Peace.